welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's video I'll give you a tour of my UK exotic garden and cactus greenhouse in February. Let's get straight into it. So this was my biggest echium which I was hoping would flower this year. I did wrap it in fleece but you can see it's definitely dead and rotted and what a shame because look how thick that trunk is there. It was ready to flower. Similarly the smaller one is gone definitely dead soft um to the touch however there might still be life in this one you can see it's still green in the growing points a couple of growing points there um still looks okay and the only difference with this one was that i managed to keep the fleece wrapping on in in the storms in the wind it didn't blow off whereas the other one did so uh, fingers crossed that this one uh, will flower this year okay let's take a look at the gunneras gunnera tinctoria i've got two plants we'll look at the one in the barrel first and you can see it's pushing up new growth um definitely alive and well there's a few growth points that look a little bit frosted a little bit bad but you can see from where it's pushing out because of course gunneras start in the middle and they grow outwards pushing outwards from the first the main rhizome so this one is definitely uh filling the barrel it will look fantastic this year but of course i'm keeping on uh the winter protection for now because the first leaves it throws out tend to be the biggest and i don't want them to get frosted and it's a similar story with my gunnera in the ground. It's uh, it's looking healthy. Uh, it looks alive and well. Um, I might add a little bit more protection on that if these rot down any further. Um, and I won't, I won't be uncovering that until the last frosts have definitely gone. Um, but the gunnera is alive and well. Okay, onto the cord lines. Now I've got two cord lines um, in my garden. Standard green form, cord line Australis or Australis. And the first one, which is on a west facing wall with a decent sized trunk, um, has taken no damage whatsoever. Um, you can look down into the growing point and everything looks healthy and strong. That's fantastic. Really pleased with that one. However, let's have a little look at the other one. Now this cord line is on my uh, west facing wall and it gets a lot of uh, the afternoon sun in in winter um, however if you look at the one just there it's sort of got a little bit of frost protection from the eucalyptus tree whereas this one's got nothing overhead and you can see that it's definitely taken a hit in the growing point there so a little bit of spear pull a bit of a die back there and uh, luckily though it is a multi-stemmed one which is why i bought it in the first place there are a couple of growing points down there already and the rest of the stem looks good so um i'll just leave it i'll just leave it and see what happens hopefully it will uh, bounce back to life but it's definitely not dead um, and it doesn't look as bad as some i've seen online and around uh, the neighborhood um so fingers crossed this cod line will come out unscathed too. Onto my banana grove, Musabashu. Well, this is the second or third waterproof covering I've had to put on it. A few has blown off in the storms. Um, my two main trunks feel solid. Uh, pseudo stems, sorry. Absolutely fine there. And to be honest, I didn't even wrap it very well. And in parts, it's only got one layer of fleece um, before it gets down to the uh, the straw. This baby pup perished. It still feels hard there, but it's snapped in the wind or uh, whatever. But again, no problems with that. And I'm hoping there's a lot of pups still alive and kicking under the straw because I would like to divide this in uh, in spring and do put a new grove of bananas just in this space down here uh, next to the hammock. So again, I'm not gonna unwrap that till I know the frosts are definitely over, which is probably April. So 
uh, it's definitely pushing out new growth. I can feel, you know, it's grown. I can feel it's sort of bent over, growing up there, pushing through, which is, which is what they always do when they feel a little bit of warmth. So there's the mustard bass dew. Uh, Paulonia, foxglove tree. <laughs> Not a lot to look at the minute. I have cut it back, hoping that it'll uh, start shooting from here. But if you're new to Paulonias or foxglove trees, um, the accepted method is to cut them back in maybe in February or March, and uh, they will sprout with vigor from the side shoots further down. Um, but it feels good. No problems with uh, with that one. Not a very uh, exotic or tropical plant, but this is my wisteria, the Chinese wisteria. Uh, you can see the frame, a lot of buds on there. It flowered for the first time last year in our third year. Um, so it will flower again. Fingers crossed if it doesn't get hit by late frosts, but it's looking healthy and looking ready to kick on. This huge mass of strappy leaves here um, is the Nifophia, Nifophora, red up poker. It absolutely goes wild, um, overtakes everything, so it needs a real hard cut back, and I'll probably divide that, split it, and put it around the garden. But it's a real, it's a filler plant, I suppose. I love the flowers, but they don't last very long, and they're quite early in the year as well. So a lot of the time, it's just uh, foliage, and you can see it's taking over the. Um, Fatsia japonica, which is looking healthy. This is looking a good colour. This one here, a bit more yellow. And under there, there's a eucara somewhere. There's a purple eucara hidden under there that I'll cut back. Hopefully that will spring back. Um, here's my Miscanthus giganteus. I cut this back recently. You can see a couple of growth points here. And I can see it's definitely uh, ready to go. And my Arundo Donax next door. Again, I cut that back. It's, the rhizome is huge there now. It looks very healthy, very strong. And uh, I can already see some massive culms coming through, much thicker than last year. So again, this is going to be, I put this in about 18 months ago and it is re ready to kick on now. I'd love to divide this and uh, create more Arundo Donax around the garden. There's the other fats here. I'm going to hop down the waterfall. <sighs> Japanese spotted laurel. I love this plant, but it doesn't grow very fast. I've got a few around the garden that cost me a couple of quid. It, it is what it is. So this big uh, fern, I'm not sure what the kind of fern it is, but this was one of two original plants in the garden um, that I will cut back. There's another one in that bed there. But seeing as it's next to my barrel pond, I have got a, a family of newts and there are a couple of frogs in there as well. And I think it's good to give them a little bit of hiding, hiding space um, for when they come out of hibernation, which should be soon. Eucalyptus trees looking okay. I do think I need to uh, take the top off these trees because they will get huge and I would like to keep them manageable. This is my biggest Fatsia japonica. You can see here, um, I've chopped back the flower stalks, flower stems, and these are the new growth points. So it's ready to push out a new growth and put on some good height. And I think this is a year when I'm gonna cut back the lower leaves, um, expose the trunks. Some people don't like the trunks, they look a bit ugly, but I, I think they look pretty good. And also it means I can underplant this fatsia, which I bought as a, as a tiny plant. So this is the first opportunity to do a little bit of underplant, underplanting and create a canopy, I think, which is important for a tropical garden or an exotic garden. Now this sorry looking yucca doesn't look great. It's definitely been one of the casualties of the frost this year. Um, See, so it's definitely rotted inside there. And it doesn't look great. Now I am going to leave this for a while, see what happens. The trunk feels hard and it has got plenty of growing points further down and it, it, will, it will come back. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, whatever happens, there will be some life in it 
somewhere down there but of course it's a bit of an eyesore so at some point I'll cut it back and uh, and see where we are and down here you can see the Euphorbia mellifera the honey spurge this was the first winter in the ground for me I bought it as a young plant last year one of my favorite Euphorbia uh, which for a lot of people is evergreen and it looks I mean alive but it has taken some damage and it is sprouting from the base there so uh, the jury is out on if this will be hardy evergreen for me uh, but it is alive and in contrast the euphorbia wolfenii which is probably the most common euphorbia you see uh, in cultivation in the uk is already flowering giving a little, little bit of spring color always one of the first things to um, come into life in spring so if you're thinking of getting any euphorbia in your garden, I would recommend the wolf any eye. Here's another euphorbia that looks good all year round. Um, I can't remember the name exactly. Pup euphorbia purpurium or robii, robinii. It's a purple euphorbia. Uh, it does well in the shade. And it, this one's underneath the uh, eucalyptus tree. But it's looked like this all the way through summer. So again, I would recommend this if you can get hold of this type of euphorbia. Cardoons are looking good. I grew these from seed uh, last year. Got a couple of flower heads on some different uh, cardoons uh, somewhere else in the garden, but these ones, this one looks probably the most healthiest, uh, the healthiest plant. And I'm hoping to get some flowers on this one and I will need to give it a little bit of support and hopefully it will get to a good height. Trachycarpus fortunii, absolutely no problems. Constantly pushing out new fronds. Looks very healthy. Indestructible. I would like, um, I am gonna let these older leaves sort of fall down and just leave it as a natural um, looking plant. I do like the the look of Trachycarpus when you've got the old leaves on. Um, and this one's been in the ground for two or three years now. So it's definitely bedded in. Uh, established its roots so it should put some growth into the leaves uh, into the fronds this year here's a huge formium you might recognize this from uh, the video i made about plants for winter structure and how to get them for free i've left the flower stalks on from last year i think they look good i'll only cut these off when the new ones come in but they're absolutely huge always looks good and my twin trunked tracky that I put in last year, but I am going to move. I'm going to move it up there where the yucca was. And again, this is going to be my gravel bed, my dry bed with some um, desert plants in this year. That's one of the jobs for maybe March or April. Difficult to see these on camera, but I've got a lot of verbena venariensis, um, which I grew from seed a couple of years ago and they are perennial for me and self-seeding um i am probably gonna have to thin these out because they are taking over a few areas in the border but if you're wanting to get something that self-seeds and just does well year on year and just gets on with it um i can't re recommend the verbena enough get get a hold of some seeds get them sown get them in the ground and then you don't have to think about it they're just done so this is m my tetrapanax that's in the ground now <laughs> The, the, the jury's still out as far as I'm concerned because there is a little bit of squishiness to the trunk and I can't really tell. I'll have a bit of closer look there. Maybe you can drop a comment to say what you think. Is the Tetrapanax dead or alive? Who knows? Um, but the good thing is it definitely looks like it's well established its roots and if it does die back it will regrow from the ground that's the great thing about tetrapanax it always does that and i'm looking forward to getting some pups finding some pups springing up around the garden whenever it's ready to start pupping i do have two more of these excuse the noise i do have two more of these in the greenhouse that are going to be put in the ground as well so i'm good for tetrapanax but i'd love to know if you think this one is alive or dead well that's the outside and you can probably uh, see there's a lot of tidying up to do. 
a lot of cutting back in preparation for this uh, coming spring but there you go let's move into the greenhouse okay here we are in the greenhouse uh, which is for those of you who are new to the channel four foot by six foot probably the smallest walking greenhouse you can get um, and in here I've got a mixture of plants that stay in here all year round I've got a little bit of plants overwintering and then I've got some plants that are just waiting to be planted out for example these things over here uh, star aloe I can never remember the name of it but I've got a lot of these I've got more down there these will all be put outside in the dry bed um, when it's warm enough. I've got a few, here are my two tetrapanaks down there, both of them seed grown. Um, they'll be going out permanently in the beds in April. I've got a few colocasia pink china that are sort of uh, on the way back, signs of growth. A little bit of pop propagating going on. I've got my agaves down here i've got a lot of agave pups there americana um, variegated and unvariegated um this one that's not variegated which is probably the hardiest of the big ones i've got will be going in a um planted in the ground uh with a little bit of cover over winter but um yeah that one will be going the variegated ones i'll probably keep in the bowls and the funkiana definitely Staying in a bowl, but we'll be spending summer outside. A couple of jade plants there. Not a big fan of the jade plants, but they're just there. Um, Truscaea gigantea, the giant bamboo. I am going to put this um, in the border. Maybe this year, maybe next, but of course, when it gets uh, full size, it'll be fantastic. Um, my larger puntia will spend the summer outside. The yucca rostrata will be going in the ground, again in the dry bed. And of course, my favourite plants, the Dendroceras littoralis, the Robinson Crusoe cabbage tree. I've got three in various states of health and I have a few more uh, to grow from seed this year. But up on the, on the bench, I've got my Copiapoa. I've got, what else have I got? Euphorbia abisa, a couple of lithops there. Aloe striatula that will go in the outdoors in the bed. This echeveria will be going out into the bed. This Apuntia humifusa will be in the bed as well. It's shriveled up, which is what it does in winter, but it will come, it will bounce back easily. And that's the greenhouse. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and check out this video or this video too. Bye.